This is part 143 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss what happens when a query is issued to SQL Server, how to check what is in SQL Server plan cache and finally things to consider to promote query plan reusability. So first, let's understand what happens when a query is issued to SQL Server. In SQL Server, every query requires a query plan before it is executed. When you run a query the first time, the query gets compiled and a query plan is generated. That query plan is then saved in SQL Server plan cache. Next time, when we run that same query again, that cached plan is reused. This means SQL Server does not have to create that plan again for that same query. So reusing a query plan can increase the performance. How long that query plan stays in the plan cache depends on how often the plan is reused besides other factors. The more often the plan is reused, the longer it stays in the plan cache. So now let's see how to check what is in SQL Server plan cache. To check what we have got in the plan cache, we are going to make use of these three dynamic management views and functions provided by SQL Server. The first one, that is DMXX cached plans, is a dynamic management view, and the other two, DMXX SQL text and DMXX query plan, are dynamic management functions. We are going to use cross apply operator between these three objects to retrieve what we have got in SQL Server plan cache. We discussed cross apply operator in detail in part 91 of SQL Server tutorial. So if you're new to this operator, please check that video. I've typed this exact same query already in SQL Server Management Studio. When we execute this, look at the result we get. Look at the first column, use counts. This column basically tells us how many times the cached plan in the plan cache is reused. And the second column tells us the cached object type, it is a compiled plan, and the third column tells us the object type for which this compiled plan is created, whether it's an odd hoc statement that we have issued, or is it a prepared statement by SQL Server, or is the plan for a stored procedure. If it's a plan for the stored procedure, then the object type will be PROC. And then we have the query text itself and finally the query plan in XML format and when I click this XML look at that SQL Server opens the query plan in graphical format we'll discuss analyzing this query plan in a later video to remove all elements from the plan cache use this command dbcc free proc cache at the moment this is what we have in the plan cache. Now I want to remove all these elements from the plan cache. I can use this dbcc command to do that. Let's execute this. And now when we execute this query, notice in the plan cache, this is the only query that we have. Now when we execute again, look at the use counts. It gets incremented every time we execute this query because that same plan that SQL Server has generated is being reused when we execute this query. One important thing to keep in mind is that in older versions of SQL Server, up until SQL Server 6.5, only stored procedure plans are cached. The query plans for ad hoc or dynamic SQL statements are not cached, so they get compiled every time we issue an ad hoc or a dynamic SQL statement. With SQL Server 7 and later versions, things have changed. The query plans for ad hoc and dynamic SQL statements are also cached along with the query plans for stored procedures. Now let's execute a stored procedure and see what we get in the plan cache. Within our employee DB database, we've got a stored procedure, SP Search Employees. Let's execute this procedure. But before we do that, let's remove all entries from the plan cache by executing this dbcc command. And now let's execute our stored procedure once. We get the result that we expect. Let's execute this query to retrieve what we have in the plan cache. Notice within the plan cache we've got two entries. The first entry is a compiled plan for a stored procedure. Look at the object type, it is PROC. PROC stands for procedure. And look at the use counts, it is one because we have executed the stored procedure only once. And then we have a compiled plan for an ad hoc object. So what is that ad hoc object? It is nothing but this ad hoc query that we have issued to retrieve what we have in the plan cache. And since we have executed this only once, the use counts for that is also one. Now let's execute this stored procedure one more time. And then let's select what we have in the plan cache. Notice the use counts 
for PROC has gone up by 1 and similarly the USE counts for AD HOC has gone by 1 because we have executed both of them two times. So here the plan is being reused. And we also have compiled plans for prepared objects. So what are these prepared objects? These are the SQL statements that SQL Server has issued in the background. Now if we execute our stored procedure one more time and when we execute this query again to retrieve the data from the plan cache, look at the compiled plan for PROC and AD HOC. It is 3 for both of them. So up until SQL Server 6.5, only stored procedure plans are cached. With SQL Server 7 and later versions, the query plans for ad hoc and dynamic SQL statements are also cached. The query plan cache lookup is by a hash value computed from the query text. If the query text changes even slightly, SQL Server will not be able to reuse the existing plan. Let's understand what we mean by this with an example. Let's flip over to SQL Server Management Studio. So what we have here is a very simple query. Select star from employees where first name equals mark. When we issue this query the first time, SQL Server compiles this query, creates a new plan and stores that plan in the plan cache. When we issue the same query again, SQL Server tries to find the plan from the plan cache and reuse that plan instead of compiling this query again and generating yet another plan. But one important thing to keep in mind here is that the plan cache lookup is by a hash value computed from this query text. So when we issue this query again, it computes a hash value using this query text and then compares that hash value with the hash value it already has in the plan cache. If they match, it will find the query plan and reuse that query plan. So what this means is, if this query text changes even slightly, for example, you introduce a space somewhere in the query or you change the case of any of these letters, then in that case, query text has changed. So when it computes the hash value, it will also be different than what it already has in the plan cache. So the hash values will not match and hence SQL Server will not be able to find that existing plan. So it ends up compiling this query again and creating another plan and storing that plan in the plan cache. So that's why it's very important that the query text stays the same. So that's true even if we change the value here from Mark to Steve. Again, technically here, though it is the same query, since the query text has changed, the hash value will not match and it will not be able to find the existing plan in the plan cache. So it ends up again um, compiling this and generating another plan for that same query. Let's actually prove that. First, let's clear everything that we have in the plan cache and then let's execute our query. And then let's see what we have in the plan cache. Notice here we have our ad hoc statement and look at the use counts. At the moment it is one. Let's issue the same query again and let's see what we have. Notice the use counts for our ad hoc query has gone up by one. Since the query text has not changed in any way, we are able to reuse the same plan again. Now let's change this query slightly. Let's change the letter F from capital to small and let's execute this one more time. Let's query the cache again. Now look at this query right here. Our query with first name where letter F is capital, the use counts is still 2. So we are not able to reuse that existing plan. Instead, it has created another plan. Notice here the letter F is in small letter. So it has created another plan and look at the use counts for that. At the moment it is 1. So since the query text has changed slightly, it's not able to reuse the existing plan. And this will be true even if we introduce an extra space somewhere in the query or remove an existing extra space. The query text has to be exactly the same. And even when we change first name value from Steve to Mark, again here the query text has changed and it ends up creating another plan. Let's actually look at that in action. So when we look at the plan cache, notice here we have our first initial query, the use counts is 2 and then we have another query here, the use counts for that is 1 
and we have first name equals Steve again a different plan for that so when we change you know first name column values here we technically want to find another employee you know with a different first name it's the same query we just have changed the value but still SQL Server is not able to find the existing plan instead it's compiling the query again and creating at another plan and storing that in the plan cache so this is why it is very important to use parameterized queries so SQL Server can reuse the cached query plans with parameterized queries SQL Server will not treat parameter values as part of the query text so when you change the parameter values SQL Server can still reuse the cached query plan let's prove this here I have a parameterized dynamic SQL statement select star from employees where first name equals at fn at fn is a parameter now first let's clear everything that we have in the plan cache and then let's execute our parameterized dynamic SQL statement let's see what we have in the plan cache notice we have a compiled plan for our dynamic SQL statement and at the moment use counts is one let's execute the same query once again without modifying anything so we expect that same plan to be reused look at the use counts for that same query it has gone up by one now let's change the parameter value let's change it from Steve to Mark and let's execute it now let's see what we have in the plan cache notice the use counts has gone up by one we are still able to reuse the cached query plan because in this case since it's a parameterized query the parameter values are not treated as part of the query text so when we change the parameter values the hash value has not changed and we are able to reuse the cached query plan let's change it one more time from mark to John execute the query we get John's record now let's see what we have in the plan cache we expect the use counts to be 4. Notice it is 4 as expected. Here is that same example. One more important thing to keep in mind is that when you have dynamic SQL in a stored procedure the query plan for the stored procedure will not include that dynamic SQL. The block of dynamic SQL will have its own query plan. Let's prove this. In one of our previous videos, we have implemented this page, Dynamic SQL in Stored Procedure. This page calls this procedure, SP Search Employees Good Dynamic SQL. And we have that procedure right here. Let's script this procedure to a new query editor window. And notice within this procedure, we've got some dynamic SQL. And here is the page which calls that procedure. Now, before we search for an employee, let's clear what we already have in the plan cache and then let's search for John we get John's record now let's see what we have in the plan cache now notice we have a compiled plan for the stored procedure SP search employees good dynamic SQL and we also have a compiled plan for the dynamic SQL block that we have in that stored procedure now let's search for another employee let's search for mark and let's see what we have in the plan cache again notice the compiled plan for our stored procedure has gone up by one and if you look at the dynamic SQL block again the use counts has gone up by one so the summary is you should never ever concatenate user input values with strings to build dynamic SQL statements. You should always use parameterized queries which not only promotes cached query plans reuse but also prevents SQL injection attacks. Thank you for listening and have a great day.